right. Welcome to Barbell Business. I'm Mike Bledsoe here with Doug Larson and Marcus Gersey. Yo. You know what? Did we or did we not come back to active performance? Maybe we just stayed. Who knows? <clears throat> no, well, There's a whole separate know. trip. A whole separate trip. Or so they think. Yeah. We drove all the way back down, did stuff, came back. We're going to start a poll. <laughs> you guys let us know. Uh, today we're going to be talking about are you ready for 2017? Things are changing. Technology's changing. Uh, the business is evolving. Uh, business as a whole throughout the entire world is evolving. And within that, we have the CrossFit industry uh, evolving quickly as well. It's still a super new thing. And so year to year, there's more change than there is in other industries. So it's something we really need to be paying attention to. And we're going to be talking about what those changes might be and what you need to be looking out for. Uh, before we go much further, I want to point out that we have a few things uh, that you might want to check out on our blog. So if you go to barbellbusiness.com slash 2017, because we're getting ready for 2017, we're going to have, let's see, uh, our, what is, man, Marcus, you're going to Don't hate on off. my handwriting. It's freaking <laughs> I'm beautiful. I'm going to call you Dr. Gersey over here. <laughs> Dr. You wouldn't be the first, my friend. <laughs> um, no, we'll be referencing a few different downloads we did uh, or offer over the last few months um, between like the sales template on how to dial in your sales process, your uh, marketing calendar for um, kind of dialing in the end of the year, but that translates into the new year. And then the episode we did just a couple weeks ago with um, the website kind of walkthrough on really dissecting the website and what you should look for in uh, kind of reevaluating how you're showing up online. So uh, we'll be talking about these things a little bit more in depth as we get into it in the context of 2017. Yeah, we want you to be ready. And these are some tools that are going to set you up just right. And if you want to take it super serious, if you know that you are ready to really go all the way with me, I mean, um, <laughs> if you're ready to go all the way, uh, we're, they need to just schedule a discovery session with you, Marcus. That is correct. At barbellbusiness.com, if you click for apply for a discovery session, we can get on a call and we can talk about where you're at, where you're trying to go, and see if we can come up with a strategy that's going to help you get there. Yeah, so. this is this is like serious business. You're going to want to schedule off some time, have a notepad ready, maybe have yeah. your business partners around. This is not something where you're just going to like, Marcus isn't just going to give you some stuff that you might be able to implement right away. This is going to dissect your business. It might be good if you have some numbers available. Um, do a little bit of homework before you show up, things like that. Yeah. So this isn't one of those things where like, oh, there's just a canned response. This is what we tell everybody. This is very specific to what it is that you're going to need. Indeed. Yeah. Cool. All right. So a um, couple things about why this matters and why you really got to kind of look at 2017 as a, as a kind of a new opportunity is that, like you said, Mike, the marketplace is evolving still, right? Very much so. And we've hit a level of maturity now where the – you really got to be able to stand out now, not just against other CrossFit gyms anymore. It's There's other competitors that are out there that are doing a really, really good job that are absolutely crushing it, like Orange Theory, Soul Cycle, Barry's Boot Camp. These are the people you're actually competing with for your for the majority of CrossFit gyms' target demographic, right, which is your kind of, you know, 25 to like 45 working professional people who can afford a, a premium membership who really want to get results, but they love the, the fun aspect. Um, it's a really important consideration. It's no longer just about, oh, I'm going to compare against this grungy garage gym down the street. You're going up against serious professionals who take this really seriously and are proving that it's working very, very well. Yeah, I highly recommend if you've never been to one of those other types of gyms, like take take Orange Theory as an example. If you've never walked into an Orange Theory and and looked around and tried to like see what they're actually doing and and done your best to objectively think about what is it like for a person who's never... They've never done any fitness stuff before. They're, they're brand new to this world. They don't know the difference between what Orange Theory does and what Planet Fitness does and what CrossFit <laughs> does. They're just walking into a facility and looking around and, and, and just kind of getting a feel for do I want to be here or not. Mm -hmm. So if you've never done that before, I highly recommend you do that and try to think about, like, if I was brand new, how would I feel walking in here? Do, does this feel like it's a fun place to be? Do, do I feel safe here? Do these people, you know, do they look like me? Will I be accepted here? If you haven't really done that before, it, I highly recommend you do that. It, mm -hmm. it really helps... It helped me shed a lot of light on on the improvements that I need to make to our facility back when me and Mike were running our, our box day to day. And there's many places or many ways rather that I needed to improve our gym because walking into a commercial gym where they 
you know, they might drop between a hundred grand and a million dollars to like build out their facility, and look, yeah. it looks really nice. Yeah. You walk into their bathroom, and I, f- I feel like I'm at a hotel. I walk into my bathroom, I feel like I'm, I'm in like a shitty warehouse because that's where we were. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, we made a lot of upgrades to make it not feel like that. But um, you got you have to realize that that you're not just competing against other CrossFit gyms. You're competing against everyone in the industry. Anyone that's spending money on their health and wellness, their health and fitness, mm-hmm. like they are a competitor's a competitor of yours at some level, even if they're not a CrossFit gym. Right. And it, it's so easy to get caught up in, yeah, but what we do is so different. It's so much better. Remember, the average consumer does not know that. Mm-mm. They don't no. get that yet. They're still just comparing what they think apples to apples. It's They don't understand the, the difference in coaching and programming and, and how much more personalized this is. So they, they can't understand that. So you need to make sure that you are able to communicate that, whether it's through your website, through your process, through your intro peri- through intro process and, and offer, so that you really have the opportunity to meet people where they're at. Because if you don't, you're going to get passed by by these guys who are spending millions and millions of dollars on getting it right. And it's, I mean, what Orange Theory is like, what, 600 locations now or something? Something like that. They're so, growing crazy fast. Crazy fast. Right? It, so, it doesn't matter if the training is good or not. They're getting the people that would otherwise be in your facility. Yep, exactly yeah. right. So um, you owe it to them, mm-hmm. most definitely. So let's talk about a few ways that we can. Um, wh- where where can we start, right? So mm-hmm. I, I think first and foremost, looking at 2017 as a whole and thinking of what is your what is your objective in 2017? What are you looking to accomplish? Are you in a place where you really need to grow from a volume standpoint? Are you at a place where it's no longer hey we need to add a ton of members and I want to increase the value per athlete? Mm-hmm. Really get clear on what your strategy is and then take a look at your 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 calendar, lay it out in a spreadsheet or on a piece of paper if you need to say, okay, let's take a look at all the different like holidays and all the events. And, you know, we've got our anniversary party here. We've got all these different things we can do, Memorial Day workouts. And take a look at your schedule and go Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, and and give each one an emphasis, a focus, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And also take a look, like we talked about this on the social media show, think of the natural ebb and flow throughout the year, right? So we've got January, first quarter, this is a huge growth year for, uh, or excuse me, a growth period that kind of sets the tone for the rest of the year. So how are you going to show up in, let's say, that first quarter? Because it's largely going to dictate what's going to happen in two, three, and four. So make sure you start it off right. Example. Everyone thinks that, oh, well, it's, there's going to be a line out the door, like just by default, and people are just going to be here. It's always our busiest time. This is where we gain everybody. Remember, there's new competitors out there, so it may not be quite as easy as it was years prior. But also, what, do you, what can you do that's different? And what's the one thing that makes what we do in a CrossFit gym so unique is that personal touch. It's all around personalization from the programming being scaled to the individuals or whatever it is that you're, you, know, you do. But... Think about how you can lead with that. So don't just start herding people through like your on-ramp classes just for the sake of like numbers, numbers, numbers. Remember, you still need to treat each one of those relationships with the same respect as if it were October and you're like starving for members. Take each opportunity. So what? Maybe you've got, you know, you're doing 10 intros every every couple days or 10 a day for that matter if you're in a super populated area. But treat each one with the same love like you would when it's when times are tough and set each relationship upright because that's what's going to set the tone for the whole rest of the year. You get those relationships right. You have a whole new pool of people to tap into for referrals and upselling. And it's going to really influence what happens from there on out. Yeah. Anyone that's been training for a long time, in my opinion, knows that if they have something to train for specifically, then mm-hmm. they always train a little bit harder. They're a little more dialed. They're, they take everything a little more seriously. They recover better. They eat better, et cetera. So if you can provide over the course of the whole year, like, okay, we're going to do a Spartan race October 31st. We're going to do, I guess that's Halloween. <laughs> Spartan race on Halloween. Um, <laughs> we're, you're going to do a powerlifting meet uh, in March. You're going to you're gonna do a, an internal kind of new people only beginners competition at the gym in February or whatever. Like if you can schedule out events for the whole year and have that on the wall where all the members can see like okay like yeah maybe i will do this powerlift to me I, I have 10 months to train for it or maybe i will do the spartan race never done it before like mm-hmm. like if you can have all those those goals on the wall for for members to see it gives them something to shoot for where they're not just training to train anymore mm-hmm. and a lot of people won't go out of their way to find competitions on their own so if you can map out you know two three four competitions that um that are kind of they're generic enough where where anyone can do them like i think a spartan race is an awesome example like anyone can go do a spartan race especially if it's like a spartan sprint or something like that mm-hmm. and you give your members something to to shoot for and like an, an end date to be fit so to speak mm-hmm. uh, i think that goes a long way with with retention so sure um of course 
planning for 2017, most people think like, okay, how am I going to get as many members in the door as possible? But of course, at the same time, like you want to maximize retention so you don't have to worry about getting new members. And by having uh, some type of competition or or something to specifically train for, I think your retention will be much higher. Yeah, because if you look at, okay, I've got, I'm going to get all these new people in in like January, February, and March. So I'm going to have all these new people infiltrating like our community. How do I integrate them? So like you said, plan an event that's super social and it's like beginner friendly, maybe for like March or April so that, hey, we're going to get everyone together. We're going to do the Spartan Sprint or whatever your event is. And that's you're getting all these new people integrated so that they do stick around rather than it just being kind of like, oh, we'll just, you know, kind of do a, a, a comp here or a comp there. Like take a look at that calendar and say like, well, what's happening in my gym? Like throughout the year this is where i get a bunch of people in this is where a bunch of people drop off so maybe before that i'm already going to start doing more social events to like really keep people engaged because you know that you know maybe we should do bowling night there and we could do these kinds of types of things that are going to keep people really bought in when maybe a month or two later you tend to see a lot of like membership holds or a lot of membership cancellations like hedge against this stuff Mm -hmm. you know start highlighting members you know make this make this the year of you know really like featuring and showcasing the successes of your clients and like really emphasize emphasize that as you're going into that period of the year where it's going to suck, you know, and, and, and start to tie those people in and do more parties and all that kind of thing. Cause it's only going to be, it's only going to solidify what's already there and help protect against that drop off later. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like, I like having some type of a rhythm for things like that. So mm-hmm. like, like maybe it's once a quarter you have some type of a competition and then like you just talked about having like a party or something like that. Like maybe once a month, it's like the, the first Friday of the month, every month we all we all go bowling or we all get pizza together or, or we all have a party at that at the owner's house or something like that where, mm-hmm. where there's a rhythm to it. Uh, I think that makes all of your planning a hell of a lot easier yep. if you know that once a quarter we do this, once a month we do this, every week we do this, uh, rather than have to like reinvent the wheel all the time. Like, oh, what, we have, what haven't we done in a long time? We should throw a party. Right. And yeah. you can do that, but that's so much more Reactive. it's just more difficult and there'll be it'll be much more mm. likely that you'll you'll forget about things for long stretches of time. If it's the first Friday of the month every month, then you know every month you're gonna do that. And you're not gonna have this gap at any point where you're like, Wow, we haven't really we haven't thrown a party in five months. Like mm-hmm. no wonder our culture's not as strong as it used to be. We don't we don't hang out anymore. Right. Yeah, and you can, like you said, the rhythm that you can get into. Now you can say, cool, well, in the newsletter, we're going to talk about the event we did last month, and we're going to announce the one we've got coming up this month, and just get into your groove. How do we like to promote this stuff? Oh, it's the first of the month. I'm going to go write it on the board, the events for the month. We're going to send it out in the newsletter. We're going to do social posts leading up to it that week. You can get into a groove and get everybody on board with, oh, okay, this makes it, there's, takes all the guesswork out of it, and this and that. It's right there. You know exactly what's coming up. This is coming yep. up in three weeks, or this is coming up on Friday, and or celebrate what just went down, and then just the day to day stuff. And you're already way ahead of what most people are doing. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, that's why I always like 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 the Woman Crush Wednesday type stuff that you see on on social media. Like that's a great thing to do as a, as a gym owner. Like it gives you these, this automatic opportunity to highlight, in this case, a female member of your gym every Wednesday, mm-hmm. and you you have this kind of like built in structure that everyone like thinks is cool, where you can just like say, hey, you know, Jackie's fucking killing it today. Everyone tell Jackie great job for getting her first box jump or getting her first pull up or you know, PR and her her Helen time or, or whatever it happens to be. But it's the, it's that weekly rhythm that makes that makes everything so easy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hence the weekly show. What? That's right. We do a show we, for Barbell Swag. We do a show every Wednesday for Barbell Business Now. We do a show every yep. Tuesday. And having that as like the standard, we know we post every Wednesday. We know we post every Tuesday. We never miss. If it was just like, we'll just do shows and just post them whenever we're done, mm-hmm. it just it just wouldn't be the same. It would be, more, be, it'd be episode, more difficult. Episode 57 right now. <laughs> yeah, we probably <laughs> wouldn't have done as many shows. Um, in my opinion, what would happen is we would have posted like a show like every three or four days for a period of time and then would have dropped to weekly to two weeks to three weeks to and never. yeah the more busy we get the the longer the shows would have been spread out but yeah. having them every week on a rhythm makes it really easy to always be on track no doubt yeah um, another thing to consider about the whole like making your annual plan is make it with your team get mm-hmm. buy-in from everyone that's on your team invite your coaches you can maybe map out like hey here's the objectives i want to cover like here's what i think is important here's what i want to focus on as the owner of this business but then Get them involved and say, great, how do we want to do this? How can we promote this? What do you guys think? Make sure that they're on the same page as you are so that it's not just, hey, I've got this secret agenda going on behind the scenes and my coaches can't seem to keep up. You have to have whole buy-in from everyone. The best way to do that is get them involved in the process. Yeah, anytime anytime people in your gym aren't involved with what you're doing, Mm -hmm. it's it's your communication. Like anytime something's going on, I'm like, I can't, why aren't they doing that thing that I wanted them to do? And then I start mm-hmm. asking them. I'm like, oh, I, 
forgot to tell them about it. Yeah, it's a lack of clarity. It's a lack of <laughs> yeah. leadership. It's a lack of communication. It's yeah. a lack of conversations in general. Mm-hmm. Like, it's your job to make sure everyone knows what the hell is going on. And to your point, like, the, one of the best ways to do that is to take a step back and plan the whole year and then plan it plan it ideally with your team yep. yeah. you know the expression goes like if, if if you plan the fight you won't fight the plan mm-hmm. that type of thing and if your team is around to plan the fight then they won't fight the plan if you plan it all and then you come in just as dictator style like okay here's what we're doing you do this you do this you do this they will do it because they they quote unquote work for you but if they help plan it they'll be excited about it and yep. if, if they're excited about it that that me that means for you as the leader as the owner etc you just don't have to work as hard because like, they're going to yeah. want to do it. And now you don't have to manage as much and make people do things and try to convince people over and over and over again because they're excited to do it because they came up with the idea. Believe it or not, it might be better than the idea you would have come up with. Mm-hmm. That's that's very true as well. You might have a Nine good times idea. Nine out of ten. <laughs> yeah, you might have yeah. a good idea of where you want things to go. But maybe maybe you have like – I would say actually – if you think you know where it's going to go, take a step back and, and and think about it like, okay, I know 80% of where I want it to go. Yeah. And then let your team fill in the other 20% because yep. they, they might steer your idea somewhere that's actually a little bit better because mm-hmm. you have more perspectives. And ideally, if you've hired well and you have good people on your team that you that you know, you know are intelligent and you want them to be there, those people are going to have good ideas. Yep. No doubt. And they're going to be able to help you know improve the idea that you already have for your gym. Yeah, let's yep. take a break real quick, and then we're going to dive more into – the stuff that Marcus has written on his piece of paper. You can't see it. It's mine. <laughs> My name is Angelo Cisco. I am owner and head coach of O'Hare CrossFit and also owner of CrossFit Harwood Heights. The reason I joined the Mastermind is I wanted to take my business and myself to the next level. Uh, the biggest piece that I've learned uh, thus far in my journey with the Mastermind is connecting with myself and really identifying that I am the limiter in all I do in my personal life as well as my business. I plan to take what I've learned and uh, create a world uh, that I dream of and uh, that I'd love to share with the people that are around me and close to me. I couldn't imagine how far I could go without having something like this to lean on for support and finding many like-minded people that I know are my true friends and are just as happy for my success as they are for theirs. And I think that if you want that for you, Places like this and coming to the mastermind is what's your next choice? Welcome to. <laughs> and we're back. Got Doug and Marcus here. Yep. And uh, they're, I, I, I've decided to let them school us on, on everything from here on out. Or yeah. 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 <laughs> That's what we're going to do. <laughs> Take them to school. All right. No. Um. School, school me, Marcus. <laughs> So we were just talking about marketing and making a plan and really kind of like setting the bigger picture in place so that you know what you're going to work on all year and getting your team bought into it, planning together. That's all great. But before you spend a dime on marketing, please take a look at your sales process and make sure that that is optimal so that you're not just pouring people into that (coughs) leaky funnel where people are coming in and it's just not as tight as it can or should be. This is your first impression. And just because it's the new year and just because there's maybe more people than normal does not give you the excuse to not treat each and every one with the respect that these people are here because they want to change their lives. Maybe they think it's only going to be for a few months to start the new year off strong. But in all reality, you know that you have the opportunity to take change someone's trajectory forever. So treat each sales inter, interaction with the respect that it deserves. So yeah, let's the, talk about that. The worse your sales process is, the, the more expensive and more difficult all of your marketing becomes. Yep. Because if you're converting 5% of the people that come in your door and then you you improve your sales process and you end up converting like 15 or 20% of the people that come into your door or 30% or 50%, then all of a sudden your marketing becomes much cheaper because you just need fewer people. That's exactly right. So if you want to spend a ton on marketing, then, you know, keep your sales process, whatever it is, or maybe you don't have one at all. But um, if you want to, you know, spend less on marketing, have it be, you know, just less time overall that you have to spend like recrafting marketing campaigns and doing Facebook ads and doing referral campaigns and, and, you know, getting a, um, what was I thinking? Oh, doing referrals. Mm-hmm. Good God. <laughs> I, 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 had, I had two quick, things. Quick, and I, got, I, got cro- I got them. I got them. <laughs> I got two things in my head. I got them all crossed Oh, up. no. I've gone anyway, cross-eyed. Uh, the, the point of it is that is just marketing is way cheaper if you have a really good sales process yep. because you just simply need fewer leads. That's exactly right. Yep. Make the most of them. And <laughs> let's talk about what's, good job, Doug. what's cool. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> so let's talk about what's cool, what's working in sales. Let's talk about what's not gone out of style ever. 
building a great personal relationship with this person and have a one-on-one interaction, if you can swing it from a staffing standpoint, if it's difficult to swing, make it make it possible because do not just rush people in or start people in group. Hey, everyone's starting together on day one. I know that's more convenient, but don't have a sales process built around what's just what's convenient for you. Do what's best for the client and for the business, which is to start it off right. Meet them where they're at, get to know them. If you want to know more about this, check out the episode we did about the sales process. We have a whole checklist on exactly what to do. Um, I think that'll help you a ton. So if you have a website that has the link to schedule yourself for your intro session, stop it. I know it's convenient, but it is not a high-end experience for people. Give people that personal touch. Give them a form to fill out. Call them. Talk to them. That's going to increase the likelihood of them coming in. Again, much cheaper marketing. Mm -hmm. It is way cheaper to just maximize every single person and treat each one like gold than to just think like, oh, well, these are my numbers and I'm just going to make it really easy and efficient for myself and my team. Again, I get it. I'm a huge nerd on efficiency. But when it comes down to starting a relationship, efficient is not what it's about. It's about quality. So do it right. Yeah, letting people fall through the cracks is a huge one too. Like the more you're actually speaking with your members, the, the better for the most part. So, uh, what tends to happen is that someone they go to your website, they they fill out a form, they get they try to email you, or maybe they walk in the door, they they call you up, they they come in contact with the gym somehow, some way, and then they're just kind of forgotten about. Mm-hmm. Like nobody follows up with them, nobody nobody emails them to check in with them. Some you might call them up one time, you leave a message, and then they you don't keep track of it in an Excel spreadsheet, or you don't have any any type of system to systematically follow up with that person two days later, a week later, a month later, six months later, a year later, you should have a process where no matter who get, becomes, uh, who contacts the gym, that they are followed up with by someone, like, until they basically tell you no. Right. Like, if you don't get a no and you don't contact that person, like, you you messed up somewhere. It's either a hard yes, I want to be a member, or a hard no, I don't want to be a member. Anything in between, you screwed up. Yeah. And it's uh, it, that goes the old adage of buy or die, right? Or something like that, where you, <laughs> until they tell you, either they drop dead or they say, no, thanks, like follow up with them, check in with them again. Just because someone didn't make it super easy the very first time, like they filled it out and you got them on the phone that first time, does not mean that they can't be a great fit for your gym. I've had j- coaches tell me all sorts of like justifications on like, oh, well, if they, they would have made it important if it was important to them. Really? Is that always the case? I'm pretty sure that's not true because there's a lot of people who are pretty intimidated to take that first step and maybe get back in the gym. Maybe it's been a few years. You yeah. don't know their story. Yeah. Give them the benefit of the doubt and say, hey, you, re- you, you reached out to us and I wanted the opportunity to get to know you and tell you what it is that we're doing. I know you said you were interested in losing weight or whatever it is. That's what we do. We help people feel good, look good. So if you're interested, I'd love to invite you in. Let's talk and and see what it's all about. And sometimes you may have to call them or send them a text message and send them an email and do it again to follow up with that person because you never know what's going on in their life. And they very well could be an amazing fit for your gym. Mm-hmm. And again, follow up with each person. Don't let them fall between the cracks yeah. so that you can maximize every lead. Yeah, and you're, you're, you're disillusioned if you think that they're only looking at your gym. Right. Like it's like, okay, well, I'm going to look at that gym, and then if it doesn't work out, I'll just never work out. Yeah, ever. Like they're <laughs> they're looking at multiple gyms. They're, they're going to Orange Theory and they're going to Planet Fitness and they're they're going to other CrossFit gyms in the area. If you're in a mm-hmm. crazy populated CrossFit arena like the one we're here in Orange County, where there's like you know 500 CrossFit gyms in three square miles, then <laughs> then they're probably checking out all of them. And yeah. so if they if they were just like, okay, I got the morning to figure out what gym I want to go to, they're googling, they're finding websites, they're calling people. They might have called three or four or five people. <clears throat> and then if you just don't call them back. The other people call them back. Well, they're probably going to go to the other person's gym. So you mm-hmm. got to keep in mind that you are still competing for these people. <laughs> like they, they might think it's a priority for them. It might be a priority for them. And so kind of like you were saying a second ago, if someone said if, if it's not a priority for them, then I don't want them in my gym. Mm-hmm. Well, it is a priority for them. They're going to go somewhere. And if, if someone else calls them first, then you're probably going to lose that to someone else who was more on their game and had a better process and was was more willing to take the time to follow up. I've yeah. had friends, um, some some of the people who ended up being really good at sales, they talk about how they were sold in the past. And uh, one of the things that people normally like to have happen or, or – it's like a, there's like this moment in time where it clicks for someone where they're being sold some something and it's usually like a salesperson selling how to sell mm-hmm. that this happens is they demand a no. It's like like they make the person say no to them on the phone like so you don't want to do this. And mm-hmm. what you'll see is people will actually beat around the bush like well cuz they don't want to disappoint you. Mm-hmm. And making them say no is actually empowering to the person on the other side. To the person having to say no, it's like it's you're coaching them, 
kind of in, in a way, uh, if you listen to the last episode we did, uh, and Doug, you were talking about, you know, sometimes um, it, it's good. It's a good exercise for people just to say no for a while. Mm-hmm. And it's like a roundabout way of like ter- teaching someone how to like empower them to take control of their life. And so by demanding that they tell you no, instead of like saying, well, I don't really have time right now. It's like, no, you have to tell me no on the phone right now. And then sometimes that can flip them. They, and they may even follow through with saying no, but then three months later they come back and they join and they buy the program or something like that. Yeah, if someone's on the phone with you and they haven't really said yes, but they're not, they're not saying no, that means that they're just kind of in this in-between stage where they're, they're just not quite sure if the value you're, they think you're providing is worth the money that they're going to pay for that value. And, so, and or they don't feel like you truly understand what they need and where they're coming from. And so like your job is to to dig through those layers and kind of peel back the onion and figure out what does this person really want to get out of this experience. Mm-hmm. And yeah. like we always say, it's it's rarely like the, the surface level, like, oh, I just want to lose some body fat. Like nobody wants to just lose body fat. They want to lose body fat for a reason. And they think that reason is going to make their life better. So if you don't know how they're how they're really thinking about it and what's the real underlying underlying emotional motivation driving their behavior then you're gonna you're, you're gonna lose people and you're gonna think like oh they, it's just they just didn't think it was uh, it's not a priority for them it's, it's not important enough for them they're just not serious about their fitness and you can you can you can drop some um some <laughs> label on them that makes you feel better about the fact that they're not right for your gym which is rarely true yeah so a couple couple quick uh pro tips or takeaways or whatever you want to call it Quick follow-up. So the second someone contacts you, get on them quickly. Like, get back to them if you can within a few hours and, and start the conversation, get it going, whether that's via phone call, email, text, whatever you can. Make contact, get back to them quick because you're probably not the only one. Um, number two, something that came to mind while you were just talking is that, you know, when people come in and they say maybe maybe they come in, they try it, and they're like, oh, maybe not right now or I'm not really sure or maybe they're, you're having a hard time getting a hold of them, add them to your newsletter. Get them into the loop. Put them onto a longer-term nurture like sequence so that you can stay in front of them. Because oftentimes, just because right now maybe wasn't the best fit, does not mean that three months from now or six months from now, someone's going to be like, you know what? Like, I'm I think I'm ready to like do something. Or I'm ready to get after it. Who's going to come to mind? The person who's been de- delivering value, who wasn't pushy, who was on top of it, who was still professional, who you know followed up with them accordingly. Mm-hmm. That's the person who's going to come to mind, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, small tactical stuff like that goes a long way. Putting them on your email list or like having them, you know, subscribe to your Facebook page or even like adding them as a friend on mm-hmm. Facebook yourself. Like something you come in, someone comes in, you meet them for the first time and then they leave and you add them as a friend on Facebook so they can see all the stuff that you're posting personally. They can see that you're like your habits are on, are on track where like they can see the meals you're eating, they can see that you're training yourself like you can now you're right in front of them all the time. You, you turn into a role model. Mm-hmm. If they're if they don't know anything about fitness and they see that you obviously do it, it might be two months later they're like okay like i i really believe that person can can teach me and help me and then maybe they come back in mm-hmm. who knows but something small like that like adding someone as a facebook friend really goes a long way no sir because you're you're able to be influential with very little work on your part at that point yeah, yeah. if they don't have hardly any friends and you add them as a friend <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole new world ever since i saw that south park about but uh was it that one person that had like zero friends on facebook Anyways. I don't think I've seen it. It's like, it's like, oh, wow. There's probably some people. They got like five friends. They get their sixth friend. I think Game that's change- actually part of Facebook's strategy. Is Game get, changer. Get someone to, I forget what it was. It was like 14 friends. Once they get to like 10 or 14 friends, then like they'll they'll stay. They'll, like they'll stick. The snowball. Mm-hmm. It's like until someone has at least 10 friends, that's like the tipping point where they won't use their Facebook and it'll, they'll, they'll drop off. But beyond that, they'll actually start to use it. 13 friends? is part uh, of their strategy. I got, I got better shit to do. But 14, like, 14 I am all in. I'm set. updating my status every minute. Yeah, so maybe of course, hearing that, like, if you've been on Facebook for 10 years, you're like, 14 friends? Like, how is that, how is that even possible to not have 14 friends, especially if you're, like, capped out? <laughs> <laughs> like, like Marcus's. <laughs> I, s- I have room for more friends in my life. <laughs> um, all right. So, um, okay. So let's talk about the, the website being like really ready for kind of starting Q1 off right. So take a look at your site. First of all, go back and watch the episode we did on the website just mm-hmm. for an overall quality control. Do you have the basics in place to, you know, for call to actions and all that? Mm-hmm. Um, but that, was a, secondly, that was a dope episode, by the way. I agree. Mm-hmm. It was a dope episode. Was. And there was a really dope little guide that came along with it that you can download for free. Mm-hmm. I think remember. there was this dude named Mike, yeah. another guy named that dude Doug. Was super cool. And then this like really charming, like <laughs> good looking. and like, Camera guy. Camera guy. Camera guy. <laughs> and then I was there too. Um, so um, 
when you're thinking about the new year, think of, again, this goes back to something I think we've touched on a dozen times now, which is about really identifying who you want to serve from like a, a target demographic and make sure those people are represented on your site mm-hmm. so that the people who may be looking at your website come this mid-December, end of December and rolling into January, yeah. that they're seeing people that look like them mm-hmm. doing things that look totally attainable, right? Don't have some 21-year-old dude doing a 300-pound snatch like as the image on your homepage when someone lands there. <laughs> Might be really awesome for you and you're like, yeah, I totally coach that guy but if your business is dependent on like soccer moms and and who knows who then maybe put some of them up them up there working with dumbbells and kettlebells and things where they're like oh that looks kind of fun like i might be able to do that do things present yourself in a way that you're going to attract the people that are going to be a great fit for your gym Mm -hmm. right so kind of take some inventory on the imagery and the content and all that that you have yeah, and give your website a little update every once in a while. Like, even if you have good photos on there, like, if those photos are two or three or four years old, like, and those people aren't even members anymore, or the or the, the quality of the images just isn't quite there, like, just giving your web- website a little refresh every once in a while where you put new new images on there really goes a long way for the, for the current members that are already there that are like, oh, okay, like, it's kind of like painting the walls in your gym. Like, they're like, okay, they're really keeping this place, like, like up to date. And, like, they, they care about what things look like. If a member goes to your website and it's the same photos that have been on there, like, four or five years, it's, it's it just looks sloppy. Mm-hmm. Like, your members are like, oh, these guys, they just, they don't really care. Like, as long as the website's working, then, then they don't, then good. Like, yep. it's not really, like... It just doesn't look good to have something be stagnant for that long. Well, yeah. technology is moving quick enough, too, that even, even like, uh, the quality of the photos or like from three years ago that you would have on a website aren't nearly as good as what's on websites now. Just the camera that we're using right now is way better than the one they had three years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. And for God's sakes, if your website isn't mobile friendly, <laughs> <laughs> you're done. <laughs> You're yeah. missing the boat. Yeah, yeah. totally. Um, another really good point, Doug, that you brought up um, as we were kind of talking about the show was about priming your culture. And this is, I, I mean, the more I thought about it, it's probably one of the biggest things you can set yourself up for that's totally free that will make a massive impact on how people come in, mm. right? So getting your getting your community ready and doing like an awesome holiday party, having a good time, getting people to really connect and really get that get your community buzzing right before all these new people come in and you can even if you for example you know have like an annual holiday party you can even do like your annual holiday speech or whatever that you do and say like and also you know you guys are you know what make this place what it is and and say all the things that matter and you could also say and we've got, we're going to have you know the new year is right around the corner as you guys know there's going to be a bunch of new faces in here so please make them feel welcome make them feel part of the family and like kind of prime everyone and you know from a like we're having a good time and this place is amazing i love my coaches like celebrate their wins so that when the new year comes in and all these new faces come in they are they're coming into something that feels like they feel that magic right rather than it just kind of being like oh look there's a bunch of new people in here again like damn this sucks yeah Dude, it's, it's all about the culture in the community like mm-hmm. if you don't have an awesome culture and a cool community and a bunch of people that like love being here and they love being around each other then everything else you're going to do is going to be so difficult you're, you're, you're going to be pushing you know heavy wheelbarrow uphill like the whole rest of your your, your fitness career so to speak where if everyone loves being here, selling new people to come here is easy because your, your community's doing it for you. Mm-hmm. And you let somebody have a free trial, they come in, they're like, this place is fucking awesome. Of course I want to be here. And then yep. they sign up and there's no like like discussions around like price and what are you going to give me again? And, and, and like my, my fitness goal is this and I'm not sure you guys are going to do it for me. People just want to be there. It's just a cool place to be. So if you can get to that point where you just have this cool place to be, then sales tactics and sales processes become become a lot lot less of the conversation you should mm-hmm. still have that stuff there's no excuse not to have that stuff but it's just so much easier yeah i think when you have when you have the kind of process where you really get to know someone and you're you know if you're charging what you're worth and it's you know to someone they may think like oh that's kind of more expensive than i thought or than what i've paid in the past but then they look around and it's just like everyone is having a great time this is just like man, this place is off the hook like people here everyone i've walked in everyone's shaking my hand and oh nice to meet you and making me feel welcome like there's something going on here that I'm I'm curious about and I want to be a part of. Mm-hmm. That social piece is so important. Dude, paying $200 a month to, to have your entire social life damn near handled is, <laughs> is really, really cheap. I mean, mm-hmm. you, if, if, you, if you compared it to, like, going to the bar once a week or even twice a week. So you go to the bar twice a week, you spend $25 on drinks. So that's that's three drinks at a, you know, a, a middle-of-the-road bar where you're buying $8 drinks. Like, that's going to be a lot 
a lot harder to to find high quality friends in that environment than spending two hundred dollars a month just go to a CrossFit gym where you can go there every single day. They, they provide parties. It's always the same group. Like finding a tribe in in a in a CrossFit gym is way easier because it's built in mm -hmm. than going to the bar or anywhere else. Yep, no doubt. It's there's a ton of value in it, and people people feel that when they walk through your doors. If it's it's a welcoming and buzzing community, it's it's it draws you in. So you're now it's there to complement your awesome sales process where you really got to know them. They're like, man, this guy sat down with me. He like really asked me about my past and what my goals are. And that felt really good to talk about what I really want. And he really kind of dug it out of me. And then everyone here was super cool. It really makes it a lay down. If someone has any desire to get fit, mm -hmm. they see that this is an awesome place I want, that people want to be at, which is that validation. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if you make it personal, win, win. Yeah. So as the new year, as the new year approaches doing a Christmas party or doing a New Year's party or both, no reason you can't do both, like having having these parties and telling your members like, hey, these are for everyone, like bring your friends, I would, we'd love to have anyone that wants to come, like just because they're not a member of the gym doesn't mean they can't be a part of our community and they can't hang out. Yeah, yeah, our, our friend Logan at Deuce Gym uh, has, has that sign, multiple signs across his gym that say, that say, you don't have to work out to kick it. Like, it's just like, that's that's cool like you don't have to like train to just fucking hang out like that's the kind of vibe you want to have at your gym if someone walks into your gym and you're like hey you training today and they're like nah not really i'm just, I'm just here to hang out you know you're doing it right people yes. are just coming to your place to kick it you're doing it right that's where you want to get to <laughs> that is the yeah. measure of success in your culture straight up yeah yeah awesome um and then we touched on this a little bit ago but i think just to kind of bring it all back into full circle is like getting your staff involved in this and i think that not just from a planning standpoint but like really getting them in making them feel taken care of holidays is a really easy time to do that by getting them you know great christmas gifts and like maybe you do like a team dinner for the holiday that's something separate from the holiday party like really kind of solidify the culture within your staff and your team and bring everybody together and like we're doing this together it's so important to get everyone like aligned going into this because not only is everyone going to maybe work harder, they're doing more classes, there's a lot going on, there's more people to get to know. Again, that same energy you want from your community, from your athletes, you need from your coaches. Your coaches should be showing up like gunslingers every single time. Like I'm like ready to get after it. New face, I'm on them, right? And it's like they're they're just killing it. And the best way to do that is to make them feel like they're a part of something special and that they're taking care of and we're doing this together. Mm -hmm. So invest in your team and get them on board with your vision. Spend time with them. You know, invest in them emotionally so that you have that connection as you go into this first quarter and be ready to kill it. No yeah. doubt. I highly recommend doing that out of the gym. Yes. Take like we do this with our team. We take once a quarter, at least like a day or two, where we're, we're not working. We're just talking about how we're gonna how we're gonna grow the company and, and what we're gonna do. Um, you know what the strategy is moving forward, what the vision looks like, and then by kind of getting out of that day to day grind and getting everyone aligned on where we're going, so we can go there together. Mm -hmm. It makes it makes everything so much easier. We didn't we haven't done that for the entire time that I've been in business, but for the last couple of years, we have done that. And after doing that, having a quarterly offsite, like a lot of big companies call it, um, really, really is effective at getting everyone on the same page. Yeah. Game changer. Yeah, Game I changer, mean, for I, sure. I look forward to it every time because it's, it's super fun. You, you get used to like kind of like renewing that like vigor with your team around like we're getting pumped up again because everyone gets into, a, into that practice too of like we see each other every quarter, we're going to go have some fun, everyone kind of reconnects, people kind of let their guard back down and it allows you to kind of like rebond and like go back at it fresh yeah yeah you let everyone on the team like share what they want to stop doing in the company like th this is annoying or this is this is not working very well or what have you and then you talk about also okay we're stopping all these things now what do we want to keep doing and then what we want to start doing And if you can have that conversation of of stop doing keep doing and start doing uh it makes it where those those um, meetings are, are very, very fun because everyone sees that we're going to stop doing the stuff that's really stressful or really frustrating, and then we're going to start doing all this new stuff that's really exciting. Mm -hmm. Good stuff, good stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, anything else do you think we should cover today? Good to go. Locked and loaded for 2017. Boom. So just a quick <laughs> reminder, um, make sure you guys check out. Uh, we have for the uh, sales piece, we've got an episode where you can check out the uh, the sales checklist. Um, we're going to link all the, to all this stuff in the uh, show notes on the uh, Barbell Business blog for this episode. Uh, so make sure you check that out. We'll have the uh, marketing calendar. Um, we're going to have the website um, link as well so you can get that kind of like analysis on your website um, and like I said like Mike said in the beginning of the show if you're serious about making 2017 the best year yet apply for a discovery call let's get on the phone and let's talk about what you're doing what what you're looking to accomplish with the business so that we can 
put, talk about a plan and see if we can help you get there. We have a, a really wonderful opportunity to get to work with a lot of really passionate gym owners, um, and we're really making a difference in this industry. And um, if that seems like something you want to be a part of, let us know. We'd love to work with you. Right, and if you're listening to this on audio only, uh, mm-hmm. you can go to barbellbusiness.com slash 2017, and that's where all the show notes will be for the show. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. Thanks, fellas. Later. Later.